Hi there guys, uh, how are you doing? This is your friend and tutor Manas Patnaik and guys this is going to be problem number 2 in this lecture series on cycloidal curve. So we'll be taking up epicycloid this time around and let's see what the problem has in store for us. Um, it goes like this, a circle of 50 mm diameter rolls on the circumference of another circle of 175 mm diameter and outside it. All right. Trace the locus of a point on the circumference of the rolling circle. For one complete revolution, name the curve, draw a tangent and normal to the curve at a point 125 mm from the center of directing circles. Now guys, uh, this particular problem is associated with cycloidal curves. First thing is to you need to identify the rolling circle and this is the rolling circle having a diameter of 50 mm. And there is also a directing circle having a diameter of say 175 mm. The next thing to identify is where is this rolling circle rolling? It's rolling outside the directing circle. That is a clear indication that the curve generated is going to be an epicycloid. So let's write down this condition initially. Circle rolls on and outside the directing circle for one complete revolution. So we have this rolling circle diameter 50 mm and we have this uh, directing circle diameter as 175 mm. So the radius of rolling circle is going to be 25 divided by 2 and the radius of directing circle is going to be 87.5. That is 175 divided by 2 will give you 87.5. Now guys just think about this when this rolling circle starts rolling and completes one revolution some kind of an angle is going to be subtended at the center of directing circle. How much that angle is that can be computed with the help of this formula. 360 into small d over capital D it's going to be equal to 102.8 degrees. So this 102.8 represents the sector of a directing circle. Uh, above which there is going to be a rolling circle that's going to roll all right so let's get started with the construction aspect of this particular problem all right so we've made a point let's say the name of this point is o and this is what you call the center of the directing circle the entire directing circle is not to be made rather a sector that is 102.8 degrees is going to be made okay so this is this line that i have drawn it represents the radius of the directing circle having a magnitude of 87.5 fine so let us have a protractor over here okay now the angle subtended over here is going to be 102.8 so this is the zero mark from here you need to go over here 90 100 102.8 is going to be something 102.8 is going to be lying somewhere here so you guys can take it approximately as 103 degrees because 102.8 degrees is not possible for humans only Rajnikanth can do so <laughs> anyway uh, let's have the line 102.8 degrees fine so let's remove this protractor all right let's start again this is 102.8 degrees this is 87.5 and this is the point p which we'll be keeping a track on and above which we'll be making this rolling circle let's draw this so okay you can produce this line and this distance is going to be 25 millimeters okay and this automatically qualifies as the center of the rolling circle fine so let's have a rolling circle all right now perpendicular to this line we have this line over here and perpendicular to this line we're gonna have one more line and let's move ahead this way so you can clearly see that this rolling circle automatically has been divided into four equal parts so four parts pick say one part right and divide this into two equal parts divide this also into two equal parts in such a way when you divide each and every sector over here into two equal parts you're gonna end up having circle divided into eight equal parts something like this all right fine now i'll do the numbering portion one two three in the anti-clockwise sense there is a specific reason why i've done the numbering in such a way all right now let's have the arcs with o as center and with op as radius i'm going to draw an arc right now something like this so this rolling circle is rolling in the clockwise sense and with o as center and with o7 as the radius i'm going to make an arc here again now with o6 this is the center and with o6 now with O5, with O4, all right? So these are the arcs. Fine, let's move ahead. Now, just guys think about this. If we have a rolling circle over here, it starts to roll in the clockwise sense. This point over here will come into contact above this surface, okay? So this point comes into contact initially. After this point, this point is gonna come in contact. That's why this has been named as one, this has two, and then so on, three, four, five, six, seven. And finally, we have point B. Fine, all right. So circle has been divided into eight equal parts arcs have been made from all these points and the next thing to do is when this circle will start to roll and complete its uh, one revolution you should realize this all these points are going to make an impression over it like one point is going to make an impression here point two is going to make an impression here three four five six seven and finally p 
so you, you should realize that this surface over here this arc over here will get divided into eight equal parts and that's exactly what we're going to be doing right now okay so this angle is 102.8 <coughs> so let's draw an arc something like this okay you can see this arc let me draw it once again okay at of any suitable radius with os center draw this arc now with this extreme point as the center you need to put an arc and with this extreme point as the center you again need to put an arc something like this okay so this is the intersection point okay now so this angle uh, has been divided into two equal parts so two can be made for all right so keep your compass here put an arc keep your compass here cut that arc it's going to be looking something like this all right okay same stuff has to be repeated with this as the center and with this as the center okay with this as center you need to make an arc with this as center you need to cut this arc all right now you can clearly see that this angle 102.8 degrees has been divided into four equal parts okay so initially there was only one angle one was made into two two was made to four and now what we're going to do is four can be made to eight all right so let us say we have this angle over here okay so keep one leg of your compass here okay and make an arc okay and then with this as center again make an arc something like this so this is the intersection point same stuff has to be repeated in this section also okay with this as center put an arc with this as center cut an arc something like this all right same stuff here also with this as center and with this as center again we need to repeat the same step over here also this as center and this as center all right so we have all these points okay now the next thing to be done is so this is the initial center position this is going to be center position at one center position at two and so on okay likewise i have written them down all right now when c point was here p point was here so when c point is going to change its position let's say circle rolls along this surface and c0 becomes c1 so what you need to do right now is we need to keep your compass set at a radii of 25 millimeters and this arc you see passing through point one you need to take this as the center c1 as the center you need to put an arc over here something like this and this is you're going to be your point p1 okay same step has to be repeated for c2 let's say we take c2 as center this point as center and this is the arc passing through point two all right and with c2 as center you need to cut an arc over here so that is going to be your point p2 similarly for c3 we have an arc passing through three okay so c3 as center you need to put an arc over here so this is going to be point p3 all right for c4 we have an arc over here take c4 as the center you again need to make an arc this arc is not going to intersect anyone all right it's it's going to just touch this something like this let me show you how that's it that's it that's point p4 for you all right now we have c5 so we've got to make sure that this arc passing through 5 this arc passing through 5 should be intersected with c5 as center you need to again put an arc over here so this is going to be p5 c6 as center and this is the arc through 6 all right so with c6 as center you need to put an arc over here somewhere here that's point p6 fine so this is the arc through 7 all right and with c7 as the center you need to make an arc over here this is p7 and finally you take c8 as the center the arc is just going to touch this all right and uh, this is going to be point p8 fine now when we join all these points in sequence you're going to have the curve generated and which is popularly known as an epicycloid right that's it that's what you call an epicycloid now guys there was one more thing in this problem that we are supposed to make uh, put a tangent and normal at a certain point 125 mm from the center of the directing circle so guys this over here this is the center uh, this is the directing circle guys and this is the center of the directing circle so with os center and with the radii of 125 millimeters we need to put an arc taking o as the center all right so this is the arc okay so this particular arc is intersecting this epicycloid over here and hence you can say that this point is at a distance of 125 from this o okay this point now let's say this point is named by q and with q as the center and somewhere along this center arc you see okay we are going to put an arc yet again and that's going to be having a radii of 25 millimeters small r small r corresponds to the rolling circle radii all right so with qs center i'll put an arc over here something like this okay so this point i'm talking about so this is s and the next thing to be done is to join s with o all right and on drawing this line you should have realized that this surface was intersected somewhere here i mean the surface on which the circle is rolling all right so this intersection point let's say this name of this intersection point is m and when you join m with q you're gonna have a normal 
all right and line perpendicular to the normal passing through q is going to be what do you call a tangent so guys that was all from my side this is manas patnaik signing off um i'll see you again for problem number three which is going to be based on hypocycloid until then it's a wrap and have a great day